All right, Wayne, we have completed a moral victory over Arsenal. Fantastic penalty shootout win. Did you enjoy it at three in the morning? Yeah, because um, that's all that happened, right? They just came onto the pitch to take a bunch of penalties and then uh, left the American crowd satisfied uh, and a a bunch of travelling manks as well. Um, United fans agree, aren't they? Like To travel all the way to... I know a few, I know, obviously, Pete Boyle, visibly... Has gone over. Andy Mitten's yeah. gone over to work, but I know a few others who've gone over as well. To I mean, that's like that's hardcore to go that, that way to that part of the world for the preseason, um, just for a penalty shootout um, because there wasn't a match apparently. But uh, yeah, we won moral victory. Great, um, mm-hmm. great omens, really. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Nana pulling off some tricks. Uh, I did quite enjoy him. Walking all the way to one side of the goal, pointing to the other side, and then diving the wrong way. <laughs> I mean, after all of that, yeah, uh, kind of amusing. Uh, uh, obviously, completely meaningless. Uh, third of the preseason game, so there's Rosenborg, which was absolutely dreadful, just a really crap game, but mostly kids and a, a couple of senior players, a few more senior players back against Rangers. Um, obviously, a fine performance from Ahmad for 45 minutes there, and a yeah. Really nice goal as well. Seems to have played himself into the sort of first 11, starting 11, I think, maybe. We'll see. And then defeat to Arsenal, which included a goal, which was at least two yards offside. Um, yeah. MLS referees. Fucking hell. Uh, it's, yeah, The standard was not great of officiating. And I think at some stage, the they were just kind of guessing, basically. They were just hoping they got it right because they seemed to be sticking their flags up at on yeah. stage all the time. But did we learn anything from it? Well, like I said, the MLS referees, I'm not going to get too much on their back, but um, I know that Wayne Rooney has a famous gripe with them, doesn't he? Like, famously went to town on them and talked about like the need for improvement and everything. Um, to, to do one of my infamous diversions, with pre-season, I'm warming up with a, a, an infamous diversion away from the main topic, but the Wayne Rooney subject is is really interesting because, as you know, I wrote a, a book on him that came out a couple of years ago, and I talked to a lot of people who played with him in America, and they talked about how um, they thought he'd be really good for challenging the, um, you know, the system to, to actually make systemic changes because he cared about the welfare of the players and everything like that. And um, so when he went back to DC as manager, I thought, oh, good, we might actually see some kind of mini revolution here. And it didn't turn out like that. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, that's a tiny diversion. I told you it was preseason war. Um, the referee, it was, a, it was a terrible decision, that. I mean, and, and the. I will say the only good thing to come out of it, because it, it was a game that went downhill. It was a, even for a preseason game. The one thing I noticed, cause did we play Arsenal? In, we played them last season preseason as well, didn't we? And yeah. I remember that being a, a little bit too aggravational. They they went too, they were a bit too overzealous in some of the tackles. And I saw that again last night, and I'm like, same last night. What are yeah. you doing? Like this is supposed to be an exhibition. It's like when you know Apollo Creed and Drogo, to, you know, just go easy on each other. This is shadow play. Um, I I yeah. uh, I felt Arsenal were the the worst for that, but. Um, Collier for United started off by cleanly tackling Jorginho, then leaving him in an absolute hump on the floor and just kind of looking at him with total disdain. Uh, I, I like the kid for the kind of competitiveness. I think there's some good points about his game. We can yeah. talk about him a bit more, I think. But, yeah. uh, yes, there were definitely some spicy tackles in that one. It's probably the most entertaining part of it all because the game wasn't awesome and the pitch was absolutely dreadful. It's laid over the AstroTurf. There are, of course, some MLS sides still play on AstroTurf, which uh, yeah. I bet their injury rates spike. But um, it didn't. Uh, it wasn't a great surface. I do wonder whether it contributed both the Hoyland's potential hamstring twang um, and uh, who else? Lenny Yara's muscle yeah. injury, which yeah. is a bit more serious. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, because it just didn't look good. It was probably quite hard underfoot, given that it was laid over a you know, not a proper surface. Normally they have a kind of layered substrate, don't they, to allow for drainage and all of that. Yeah. So that wasn't awesome. Refereeing was crap. There were obviously United made two changes in the first half and then 10 at half time. So, yeah. you know, two different sides. Again, third game in a row. Uh, Ten Hag and his four head coaches. Uh, we'll talk about those as well. 
Uh, yes, quite some changes in the backroom staff. Anyway, third time in a row they've done that. Um, and it's a short pre-season this year. And I don't mean in length, but in terms of the number of games. Yeah. Five games rather than eight. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I guess they've got a plan here. Um, of the actual game, what stood out for you? Any players in particular, tactical changes? Well, Collier has made an impression in, in pre-season. Yeah. I, I do like that about him. And I, um, the incident that you're referring to, there was a little bit... Can you remember that? There's an infamous picture of Giggs standing over Vieira with his arms, like like sort of yes. like kind of yes. pitiful expression at him um, in the famous 4-2 win. I'm just saying infamous and famous, so I'll try and cut that one out for the... If you can bleep me, bleep me if I do that again. Um, so... I, I like that about him because obviously you're gonna like a United kid who goes in like on on an Arsenal player at the player of course you that's right a passage so if you if you get that but um, generally in preseason he's looked probably the most composed of the kids um, I, I say that no they, they, a couple of them have done quite well um, the lad who did the assist for Hugo's goal the um, at Rangers that was a nice assist so there's um, I, I I can't pronounce his name. I'm not going to try to butcher it and be all manners of disrespectful with my pronunciation. So I'll I'll not try. Someone can tell me how to do that. On, on. No, you can try if you know. Uh, are we talking about Maxi Oyedeli? I think so. Yeah. There you go, Oyedeli. Well, it's easy. Well, it was easy for you to say, not for me. I needed a lead in with that. Um, so I've had a couple of hours practicing it. I, I would have butchered that. I would have, if I were left to my own devices. I'm not Liam Bradford. I haven't prepared it or Alan Keegan. Um, but yeah, um, it, so the, the, there are a couple of kids who have actually done quite well and, and impressed me. Uh, but yeah, Ahmad, like you said, um, I don't know quite if he's ready for a starting position. But I would think the fact that he's Playing a lot is going to stand him in good stead to actually start that position um, when when the season kicks off. And um, the goal, of course, Ireland took it very well. I mean, against a, a novice defender yeah. and a, a poor goalkeeper. Um, but you, the point of goal scoring is confidence, and he, he took it quite well. And even Rashford's pass for it, um, it was a bit of a yeah, yeah, around the corner. Yeah, yeah I, at first, on first viewing, it looks like a bit of a hoof, but. Um, but then, no, it's a nice, it's a nice goal. Like, you can't. I, I'm not having to go with the kids for Martinelli's goal. It's just one of those things. He, he danced and he did quite well for it. And, yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean, Martinelli did well, but he's he's beaten James Scanlon, who normally plays sort of right side of midfield yeah. or or in the front three for the reserves. Um, and then obviously Will Fish, who spent a couple of seasons on loan at Hibernian, has looked okay at that level, but I don't think he's going to make it at United. Mm. So, you know, some context for the rather dodgy defending there, I think. Yeah. I mean, Hoyler's goal is exactly what you want from him. I mean, so much of last season he spent with his back to goal trying to play that kind of number nine, which is not his thing. Get the ball in front of him. Yeah. And he does that. And, you know, yes, he's bullied a kid there, but he's done the bullying. At least, exactly, you know, yeah, yeah. Made the run. Rashford spotted it. Uh, it's an under underappreciated quality of Marcus Rashford. His vision, I think, uh, we saw that in Cup final, didn't we? You know, sixty yard ball for um, exactly, yeah. for, for 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 somebody over to the right. Garnacho, I forget now. Garnacho, yeah. that's it. Um, and again, ran the corner for Hoyland, who's uh, run past his man. It's great. You're talking about the kids uh, who impressed me. Obviously, obviously, Amand, I don't know we count him as a kid really anymore since he's into his fourth mm. year at United. But uh, of the actual kids, kids, uh, um, uh, Sam uh, Murray, the left back, yeah. or he can play the side, can't he? He's done really well. I think uh, Harry Amas has got it. His ceiling is so high. Uh, yeah, he, he mostly looks fantastic. Going forward, he can come inside, so invert. Uh, he's totally comfortable on the ball and in possession. Very attacking. He can overlap or he can underlap. The defending side of him, we haven't had to see much of it so far this um, this summer. Really didn't have to do a lot of defending in that first half. So yeah. that will to be tested. Um, and then obviously, Collier, yeah, I just think he's super competitive. I mean, it's not surprised there's reports that Ten Hag likes him. I mean, he's in a position that we need a player. Probably two. If he could be the second of those players, that would be a massive bonus, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, not expecting him to start 30 games, but if you can do 10 to 15, that would be huge. 
We'll if he can we'll play, see. if I he mean, can play ten to fifteen, I don't know about start ten to fifteen. I think that yeah, yeah, seems have to a start bit, them, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that the the big thing about rather than say anything like I think that the players are going to play um, a certain amount of games. The big point is, do they look composed in the company that they're keeping? And they do. All of them do. I don't. I don't. I don't there are worries, like you say, Fisher's ability. Um, we kind of know his level, um, but yeah, I think by and large, you look for composure. You look for their ability to not crap themselves on on that stage and none of them have them. Yeah, yeah. They look comfortable. They look like they be, belong in that company. Yeah, all right. Jury out on the different abilities of them, but for sure, um they didn't look like you yeah. don't you're not thinking, oh my god, this is a, a massive emergency. You, you understand that all these there are so many players to come back. We're talking League Cup players, um and I think that they're doing themselves a, a decent Representation in, in in the guise of the like, say, are these players going to be part of the League Cup squad? Yes, um, yeah. You, you look forward to seeing them in that in that competition. What I liked about Collier was that he was against Odegaard, um, and to a lesser extent, Georgina was not direct matchup, and he just he got very tight to Odegaard. There may be an instruction. I think we know that he doesn't like it up him. Um, he doesn't like players getting very tight. He wants space. Uh, with the ball in front uh, yeah. to play those passes, which obviously is you know a very creative player and creates a lot of chances, and and for the most part he kept very tight and didn't let him have that space uh, and did that job very well. You know, obviously lots more to learn about him than in in three preseason games, but because yeah. uh, the the step up is obviously very high in terms of level, but just also intensity and speed and so on. So that was good. Uh, bit worrying about Hoyland you know his legs sort of seem to go from under yeah. him there were reports I saw on Twitter of um people who talked to him in the mix zone that he said it wasn't a problem so maybe it was just a precaution felt something yeah like kind of um uh looked like he was saying hamstring didn't it yeah uh if you're trying to lip read him but yeah, we'll see. Maybe it just felt a bit tight. So, you know, fingers crossed because, you know, we've still only got one striker for the moment until um, until uh, the new lad whose name I'm totally forgetting. Xerxes. Yeah. Xerxes. I can it pronounce sort of that one. Xerxes. Yeah. It's, well, he, the way he says the Z is a sort of say. Okay. If you listen to him, he's yeah, you can find him saying his own name. Josh Xerxes, I think. Yeah. It's close I'm going to get. I mean, we 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 pronounced Ruud van Nistelrooy wrong for six years of his time at the club. So you know, hey, um, and yep, Stam, yeah. uh, that's totally wrong as well. Um, so there you go. Uh, who else? Uh, Hannibal came on for Hoyland. I mean, he, he's playing Falstein. That's not his thing. But I, I just worry about him that he's not. I mean, he had fifteen minutes and they were taken off at half time. So I'm not going to judge him on that performance. But you know. But I'd be surprised if he's at the club at the end of the window. Honestly, I think they'll try and find another club. A disaster of a season last yeah. season at Sevilla. You know, kicked one of their players and never played again, basically. Um, so not awesome. What else did we had? We had Sancho. I thought he looked kind of intense. Didn't really achieve much, but he worked really hard. I like that because that's the thing that's been people have criticised him most. Yeah. I think Anthony who. I, I was going to call it that left. I was going to say that left wand was a bit wayward, but I don't. I think wand's a bit generous, isn't it? The left peg was a bit wayward. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I, I I remember a year ago um, when San, Sancho was playing false nine a year ago. Yeah. And um, when we were looking yeah. to see how what Oiland was going to sell, and you wonder where he's going to fit into into this kind of system, considering that we, we have. I mean, is it that different, really? I mean, Zerxes, Zer Zer um, if, if that's the way, if we're going to say with a flourish, and he deserves a flourish, um, he, yeah. lo he looks like a kind of player who, who can, like Rashford, like Sancho, move along the front line. He doesn't look like he's going to be tied down to a spe specific position like Hoyland. Um, and, yeah, I mean, those aren't bad qualities. I mean, yeah, all right, we, you want an hour-and-hour hour striker who's going to guarantee you um, 20 odd goals, but at the same time, football's fluid. Um, United, if they don't have that, they're better off having a number of you know, it's nobody having Rashford 
trying and failing in that position. It's better off having floating options who are, can rely on the pace and their ability to run past people and create space for others. And that can happen anywhere in the front line. So um, it, it worries me. It worries me that in Yoro and, and Hoyland, these are players who we can specifically bought for positions where we've, we've struggled to fill them. And like, obviously then they've gone down with knocks and you're immediately going, Oh, here we go. You, you problems in, in those areas immediately, because then it speaks to what, um, 10 I'll say it before or after the game, he started speaking about the depth of the squad again, which is an obvious thing that one in it strengthened. Yeah. All right. We, yeah, we after, know. Yeah. Be- because, um, because the point is that, Xerxes come in as a replacement for Martial, but we were already light in attack, so we needed another player anyway. And this has just exposed that. And Yoro's coming as a replacement for Ram, but we all already needed um, a better centre half. So the the conversation about Delit and Branthwaite, all those conversations are going to just carry on anyway. Um, it does, the Hoyland one, I'm not so bothered about because, like you said, it, it seems like he's and it was a precaution. Um, and I mean, we said that you're not bothered. You're talking about with a view of will he be in the community shield lineup and will he be part of the, the team for the first game of the season? So in that perspective, I think oh, we still got a good bit of time. The Euro one concerns me because it was so innocuous and we we've heard nothing yet. Um, so we'll wait and see on yeah. that. Um, but it's like you said, the, the pitch though is they it's such a stupid. The thing that they said afterwards is that they were trying to find someone to buy the pitch. They said that after the game, but they didn't find any takers. It was just like, uh, I, don't, I don't even, it's so ridiculous that I don't even know where to begin with it. It's like. Well, I'd say uh, some locals in uh, Inglewood should turn up, you know, and they could uh, lay down some turf in their garden. Thing is, there's water's so expensive in Los Angeles because it's so bloody hot and there's been a drought for like 97 years that yeah. everyone has AstroTurf anyway yeah. uh, because it's just easier. So I, I know someone who, whose name I won't mention who um, had a, an illegal lawn in Los Angeles <laughs> so, oh. or did a legal amount of watering which they weren't supposed to do. I think you just pay you pay extra or something like that. You know, I, I know uh, in my part of the world, which... Now, it has a reputation for raining a lot. Water triples in price over the summer. You're really encouraged not to use it. Um, right. And it's very expensive anyway. Although, so, although yes, I, over the last year, it has rained quite a lot in Los Angeles. Um, comparative to other years, it's been yeah, quite Yeah, but it's raining. all in one go. You can't store it when it yeah, floods. Yeah. So they had yeah, the massive flood a while back. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was complete shit at the pitch. Not only is it too small, so... No World Cup games at this stadium, which is a magnificent stadium. Yeah. $5.5 billion to build it. Uh, I'm sure Arsenal fans are glad that Stan Kroenke spent it on the stadium and not their team. Um, and uh, But it's too small for the World Cup and they wouldn't take out any seats uh, without FIFA paying for it. And of course, FIFA don't pay for anything unless it's uh, Gianni Infantino's um, bonuses, shall we call them. <laughs> and Yacht. And apartment in Qatar. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, absolutely stupid. Tiny pitch, and it was absolutely crap. And uh, it made for a crap game. And there were a bunch of fans there. It was a pretty good turnout. Like, the bondholders didn't turn up. The people who paid, like, a million dollars for their seat, um, the bond on their seat that they did. And, and part of the reason that uh, they <laughs> they had to do that is because the stadium was $5.5 billion. Yeah. They didn't turn up. So there are big gaps in the best seats. But... Decent, but the prices for all these tall games are ast- astronomical because they've got this dynamic pricing on. They start at like $99, the cheapest one I could find for United Reserves versus Betis in San Diego in a week's time was $99. Yeah. Absolute bonkers. I mean, I guess people will pay it because it's a chance to see United. Yes. Yeah. Um, Coming back, that was a diversion on stadiums and pitches. I sounded like Andy Mitten for a second there. Uh, strikers, Ethan Wheatley played a half. And, you know, I like, I like, I really like the look of him in the reserves. And I feel like he's a year short of playing for the first team, basically. Yeah. And just needs to fill out a bit because he's got a good pace. He's good in the air, missed a good chance of a header late on in the game. Yeah. Uh, he scores different types of goals. He's a good channel runner. And, you know, I think there's a lot about him that's good, but he's a year away from being able to compete i think yeah and when he has played he's, he's had a couple of appearances now for the first team and 
he's just not had, um, and this isn't a criticism at all, but he just hasn't had that um, stroke of luck that, you know, something fell to him right and he's been able to do it. Because if you can get that Rashford, Makeda, then it buys you... Um, it buys you something precious, even if only for a yeah. moment. And it's that um, an air of anticipation or this expectancy from from the um, from the opposing defenders, where they become wary of you because they don't know you, but you've done something, um, which is the best position that a kid um, can be in. Obviously, that I'm speaking of Rashford, I'm speaking of Makeda, and um, things that were like seven years apart, and and nearly eight years since. Rashford did that, so it's very rare for something like that to happen. So I'm not, I'm definitely not criticizing him for it. And the thing is, Wheatley probably is his reserve team um, and youth team highlights and the way that he's progressed reminds me a little bit of Rashford in that it didn't seem obvious that he was going to make that breakthrough, but there are things that he does um, where in that bracket, in that sort of environment where. Um, he is comfortable where he can be so good on the ball. He's, he's got such a good turn, a wicked turn, and a, a natural glide to go past two or three players where, you know, he's, he seems effortless, but you can't get that at a senior level unless unless you have that sort of, like I say, you get that moment where defenders um, become wary of you and they sort of back off a little bit. Now, he's not getting that and he's not finding the space because I think finding space for... I mean, how many how many great strikers do we know came in at like seventeen and had this tremendous awareness to find space? It's very rare that you see it at seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. So I, I, again, all these things I don't really blame him for. It reminds me a little bit of. Can you remember Fraser Campbell at the start of the two thousand eight season, and we had a lot of injuries up front, and he got a run because of the fact that there was no one around. Right. And he just he was a capable. I think he played. Some decent, a decent amount of games in the Premier League. To be fair, he scored some goals as well. I, I remember scoring a few goals for for Holland. Did he? He was at Spurs as part of the Berbatov deal for a little while. Um, he did that swap, and then he played at Sunderland and Hull. Was it? Yeah. So he had he had yeah. a, a decent Premier League chance, and I think that that's the kind of environment that Ethan Wheel is in. That um, he'll get a chance. He'll definitely get chances in the first games of the season because we just don't have the numbers there. Um, well, hopefully, well, I'm saying this in this kind of this is a, a predictive environment, and I feel like he will get the chances. I just feel he needs something, he, and it could happen in preseason. It could happen, you know, like just uh, we say that he needs it in the Premier League or in in a, a senior game. Yeah, generally you do, but it could have the moment in preseason. It hasn't happened yet. It didn't happen against Arsenal. Um, but it, something could be there. He just needs something to drop for him nicely. And I, and I feel like with that run of confidence, with that run of presence, that there could be something there in him. Um, we just need that rub of the green, really. Yeah. Uh, I remember Bruno saying in, in Wheatley's debut that he was desperately trying to find him. Yeah. And th- there was that one where I forget who was, he was playing now. Uh, Sheffield United. Yeah. I, Sheffield United. I'm jet lagged, so I, I'm going to forget things. But uh uh, the defender just got in the way as uh, yeah. Bruno's going to try and find him for a tap in, and uh, I think Bruno's more disappointed. Yeah. Head in hands, uh, didn't quite make it, but yeah, there's something about him. Uh, if he was going to make a loan, I, I just wonder what kind of loan because the championship. I, he's a technical player, and I don't think that just being bullied by cloggers in the championship. I know I'm being unfair. Not that I'd get any um, pelters on Twitter or email for that, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I wonder whether what kind of loan might suit him because I'm not sure it would be the championship just because it's one step down doesn't mean it's a better you know sort of proving ground for that that kind of skill. But yeah, depends uh, if if Ten Hag I mean Ten Hag likes keeping the younger players in training because he thinks it's a good development yeah. um, arena. And now we've got uh, both. Well, we've got a ton more coaches, right? Uh, so um, we've got Rene Hake uh, and Ruud van Nistelrooy as the kind of co-assistant managers, I guess. Yeah. They're both sat either side of um, Ten Hag, sort of Ten Hag whispering all game. Uh, and then we've got the new part 
uh, set piece coach, part development coach. I think he's going to spend, I uh, forget his name, Gustav. No, it's gone. Totally. There you go. Uh, I'll look it up in a moment. Um, anyway, new coach is coming from uh, Sweden, from Lillstrom, I think, or is that Norway? Norway, yeah. Uh, he is, yeah, he's going to work on, like, with the younger players and, and on set pieces. Uh, and there was some good analysis that I think um, uh, one of the Twitter handles put out uh, analyzing the teams that have a specialist set piece, piece coach against team average team height um, against the number of goals scored. And there's a clear difference uh, if you have a set piece, specialist set piece, piece coach. Um, and so, you know, United are going with a slow there and, and maybe it'll make a difference because we scored almost no goals from set pieces last season. Yeah. I do remember that we did bring in a set piece coach, and then the the irony was that we stopped scoring after that. Um, so yeah, 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 that's right. Maybe maybe the change this time will be better. Um, yeah, I mean, do we do we worry a little bit that there's too many now, and that it starts to make him make the manager look like a you know like what what was the wording that Ratcliffe used for him? Oh, oh, oh Ashworth. Um, Eric Ten Hag is our partner in this journey. It's such a, yeah, a yeah. weird, such corporate speak, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, I'm not comfortable with that because you can use head coach, use manager, use them um, interchangeably if you want to. But like this, he's our partner in this journey. He's, no, he give the manager. He has to be the manager. Must be the most important person at Manchester United. He must be if it's manager or head coach. That person has to be the most important. Person and yeah, okay, I get this idea that football, the sport, is evolving, and you know, like there are now numerous responsibilities. And, and United, as a big club, needs that, but you still need someone who's got the ultimate accountability. And I do, I do think that Tenag retains that for now. I just feel like you know, the more that you add another person who was an head coach, the one thing I do like about it, um, I said earlier. I think I said on the last time pod, I think we've just brought um, Rude back. I do like, I did like that they were Dutch. Um, I do like that he's a Scandinavian field because I think um, historically that's a good breeding ground for United. And it seems to be like, you know, it's more sensible than sensational. You know, we haven't gone in, you know, like diverted away from, you know, United's Scandinavian roots, their Scandinavian influence has always been a positive thing. And it's, and it's more understated. Um, than trying something grandiose or anything like that. And even though if you United are a club, if if a club could do it, United could do it, I guess. But or, or could deserve to have that kind of status. Um, but sure. but having having gone this sort of understated route, I like it. It's the only issue, and I keep coming back to it, is and it concerns me less now because I, I can see the picture of what they're doing with build, putting all the coaches in place. But what concerned me at first was with all the Dutch speakers coming in, because I thought, well, if Ten Hag goes and that's the influence that you're trying to get in there, then you might look to turn a new page again and then all of these cultures will become redundant. It just seems... Mm. Um, I, I don't know if that's still something that concerns me as much because I feel like all of the cultures are coming in. It, it worried me that they were Dutch, is what I'm trying to say, because I felt like it, it was banking on him. And I don't feel like they're doing that anymore. I feel like they're getting specialists in place, and I, and that's a good thing. So, yeah, they've taught structure, structure, structure all of the time, right? And I think Ashworth was, apart from the kind of corporate double speak, has been quite clear in his interviews so far about what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm not so worried. I mean, I have to say, Rude doesn't half look like because he's got charisma, right? As well as uh, you know, some coaching pedigree, having um, been at PSV. Yeah, you know, if not a long coaching career, it, he kind of looks like interim head coach in waiting if it all goes wrong. Um, yeah, give it give it root till the end of the season sort of thing. I mean, of course, we hope it doesn't go wrong yeah. and like all the problems of last season are solved. And part of the reason for putting all these coaches in place is clearly some thoughts amongst the the new executive team that that Eric needed some help, uh, and he's certainly got it. Anyway, I looked him up, Andreas. Georgson uh, is the new set piece slash development coach. Yeah. So, uh, and I mean, it's definitely unusual because he's he was head coach at Lillestrom. Yeah. 
Rude has been head coach at PSV. Renny Harke was head coach at Go Ahead Eagles. So that's a lot of, yeah, you know, that's a lot of firepower coming into United. So let's let's hope it works and there's not too many egos in there because well, we know we know Rude has got an ego for a start. Um, but I don't expect he's coming to United. He's taken the job because he wants the job, right? Yeah. Although, as Ten Hag said, super ambitious. So. And and I like that Ten Hag responded to it that in the right way of the saying it was necessary rather than... Yeah. Because yeah. uh, there were a ton of different ways he could have handled that. And I felt like he handled it the right way, considering it's such a... That's difficult. That's a very difficult scenario, considering that your job has been under pressure for, for weeks. And then they bring in all these head coaches. Obviously, like you're saying already, like it looks like it was an interim in waiting. However, I felt like when he's he's not dodged the topic, he's embraced it and he's used it as a positive thing for the club. And I think that's the best way they could have done it. Um, mm. Considering that there's a lot of scrutiny still to be on him, like I said, it still it doesn't stop the scrutiny. So um, while he's answering the questions well. Um, every reason to feel more confident than I did last time I spoke about it. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, United head down to San Diego, short trip, obviously. Lovely, lovely trip as well. If they, yeah. I don't know whether they're going to fly or drive. It's a, it's a three and a half hour, four hour drive, but you can take the coastal road much nicer than the freeway. Um, if they want to, you know, hang out on the beach for a while, they can do that as well. Doubt that they will. Uh, in the meantime, there's been, you know, still speculation around transfer activity. I, I don't know how much they'll be doing because everyone's out in um, everyone's out in California at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so the the whole team are out there with uh, Eric, who Ashworth called the boss when he was asked uh, whether they'd be making any more signings. He said, "You'll have to ask the boss." Uh, but. I guess if Lenny Yoro's injury comes back as a serious muscle, muscle injury, he's going to be out for months, which, you know, touch wood, it's not that. Uh, they may accelerate thinking around the lit. There was speculation over the weekend or late last week that you might might make a move for Masraoui, the right back from Bayern Munich. That one seemed a bit odd to me. I, I, kind, of, I kind of like his profile for what United are trying to do. Yeah. I guess we can talk about some of the tactics, but... Uh, you know, A, his injury record is dreadful, and I, I'm not sure I like his defending very much. Um, so that one seemed a little odd. Yeah. Um, but 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 it does seem that when Bazaka is, you know, they're, they're, he's, they're definitely going to move him on, whether it's to West Ham or Inter or, or whoever. So another right back will be needed. It's not, an, a, it's not an easy one to slot in there from the youth team, I'd say. So it's probably a purchase. Where else? Midfield. I mean, they need they need a player. We I mean, didn't talk about Casemiro, but he does not look on it. At least, you know, from my point of view, he seems. Yeah, he went flying into a couple of tackles against Arsenal. He was, he was so slow to one of the slide tackles he went in for that he missed the player by miles. Yeah, which wasn't a good sign, I'd say. I I, I don't worry as much. Well, I, I, I will, let me rephrase that. I didn't worry as much with Casemiro previously because I felt like obviously when he started, he started slow. And I felt like at the start of last season, he was all right um, until, you know, his, his form dropped off the cliff. Um, so I thought, all right, he takes a little bit of time to warm up. But, um, yeah, but then now I get I get more worried um, because I think it's fair to say that I've accepted that he's in decline. Uh, there was talk that um, I don't know how, how accurate this is. It was from GFFN, the French aggregator or news outlet. I don't know if I'm being unfair by saying aggregator, but I know that this report was a second-hand report from somewhere else, so I don't know how reliable the report is in circulation, but they were saying that Paris have uh, inquiring over a £60 million move for Sancho, which I think would be tremendous business for United if that, that could happen. Um, the one thing I will say, regardless of who, um, is that United... Um, their activity has been so straightforward this summer that it's not like anything's dragged on and on. Apart from the Branthwaite thing, but it's out of United's hands. They obviously made an offer for Ever uh, for, to Everton for him. Everton rejected it. But then they went to um, Lille and signed Yoro, and that happened very quickly. I mean, when they put the offer in, 
it was done within days. That's how quickly that did it. And the same same for ZXZ as well. It just happened very, very quickly. Um, mm. As soon as as soon as the Euros was done, obviously they're, they're talking about that deal for a, a week or two. But what I mean is that it's not something that is so protracted that it will happen. There'll probably be a couple of names that would come in before the, the end of the window, which we haven't heard of yet. Or maybe we might have heard like a little whisper that they'll probably happen very quickly within like, Maybe like you say, with yeah. it coming home like within a space of of a week or two, do you know? Yeah, well, let's hope so. I mean, I um, I mean, especially in midfield, there definitely needs to be at least one body there, even if we like the look of Collier for a few games this season. I mean, obviously, a lot of talk about Ugarte. His profile, I, I just didn't. I don't know if I like from what I've seen. I watched a few of the games from the Copa America, and obviously, you know, Paris Saint Germain in Champions League and stuff like that. And you know, he hasn't been making Enrique's team because he's not the kind of sort of defensive midfielder that Enrique likes. He wants more of a ball player. Ligarte is not a ball player. And, I, you know, I think given that Kobe Mine has got many, many talents, but progressing the ball is not one of his yet. Now, it may develop over time. I just kind of feel someone who, who balances the ability to progress the ball a bit with the getting the challenges in, winning the duels in midfield. Yeah. Um, and eating up a lot of space, which he sort of does, Ugarte. And he definitely ch- makes a lot of challenges and wins duels. So I wasn't sure that the profile was right. And I just say that because I, I was kind of, it's such a surprising profile of player, to be honest, for what United need. And they seem like they've got, you know, such a good team in place that are identifying the right kind of player for the right kind of hole in the United squad that he may be a stalking horse and they're actually going after someone else. Yeah. You know, which you could think about. Branthwaite being a bit like that with Lenny Yoro, yeah. you know, and or, or maybe they were just dead surprised that Madrid never upped the bidding because uh, Madrid have got an absolute shed load of money to spend if they want yeah. to, and they still chose not to. So uh, we'll see. Definitely a midfielder, though. Yeah. One at least is going to be needed because I don't think Casemiro is going to hack it this season. And given he can't cover the ground, and and we don't want Manu to be playing at six all season. Because uh, if he does, there'll be no link between Bruno and the forwards. Then, um, then, then that would be a real problem for United. Yeah, you know, we're, we're going to be back into the situation where there's a big hole in central. Well, yeah, I mean, two years ago we signed Casemiro and Eriksen, and he's saying, "Well, that's a very, very astute piece of work to cover the next two years if we can graduate players in." But now we are two years on, and concerningly, it looks like man, they might start the Premier League season. Um, which is not the position that we want to be in. Um, I, I am interested in in that profile of the third midfielder because Menu and Fernandez are going to start. Um, we still don't know Menu; he's still developing. He's, he's got so much um, incredible potential, and where he's going to settle in that lineup, what we what's going to be asked um, of him to pick up? Because obviously, this is going to be a big season in terms of responsibility. I think he was allowed to sort of just play freely. Um, Within, well, obviously, yeah, the instructions, but I mean, he had some liberation. Whereas I think because, yeah. because his star has risen so much, it's kind of like now they'll be saying, no, right, this is your responsibility. You are going to have to be this dominant man in United's midfield. Stop playing like it. Or oh, oh, not stop playing like it, continue playing like it. But now it's your domain. We're giving you a chance. So that comes with extra responsibility. What's he going to be asked to be done doing? And then, yeah, um, the profile of that third midfielder. Could well be a smoke screen because I mean for, that seemed like a straightforward deal to do, right? Because Paris wants to sell because they need to bring they want to bring in the Benfica lad. Um, Neves. So, and I think there was a talk that United might go in for Neves to sort of to scare Paris into selling, but it might be someone someone else completely. You know, like the Euro thing came out of the, um, left field. So, um, but I I trust them on what they're doing with that because. Um, you know, Yoros are very, very, regardless of, uh, hopefully it won't be out for long, but um, it, he's a very, very smart signing. The potential of him is scary. He's so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if they're doing that with another midfielder who we don't know about yet, then fine. I, I trust in what they're doing with everything so far this summer. I think they've been, like the first summer, it was difficult last year because of the transitional bumps. But uh, the first summer I felt they were as, ruthless as they needed to be with with tenor giving him the backing to do all the make the decisions that he made and i feel like we're following that 
this this that same pattern this summer. It's, it's a bit more slow, but it's right. It feels right. Um, so um, I'm not panicking yet, but I mean, it is I did look I'm just looking at 28th of July. Uh, maybe two weeks, and we can start going. Whatever the place coming. Um, yeah, I'm there. Yeah. We do have to think about the beginning of the season because because there's some tough games. Those for, as I said before, for six games, there's a few tough ones in there. Yeah. Kobe Mainu, he's going to have another week off. It's two weeks since the cup finals. He's got another week off before he starts training again. Obviously, he's not going to lose a lot of fitness. Uh, I would be surprised if he's back for the Liverpool game in where North Carolina. So we might be looking at a few minutes against City in the Charity Shields yeah. as his sort of return. That might. Yeah, and probably not a start there. So maybe he's not starting the game against Fulham on the opening day. So that leaves quite a hole. Mason Mount, we didn't mention. I thought he's really bright. He's energetic. He moves the ball well. He's looking for those wall passes and the one twos. He's not, I like people say, ah, oh, his favorite position is 10, but he's not a creative 10, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't create a lot of chances, but he knits stuff together well. So. I just wonder where you're going to fit him into the team because it's not eight because Mainu's playing that role. Yeah. Um, and it's not 10 because Bruno's playing that role. There's a kind of open question over the right side of the forwards and Ten Hag's never tried him there, but it's where he played a lot of his time at Chelsea and for England. Yeah. So there's an option there given that Anthony has no end products. Ahmad is, you know, there's still questions about whether he could do a full season because we've not seen it. Uh, and Sancho doesn't like playing off the right. Yeah. So, you know, lo lots and lots of questions. There's an, you know, a, an opportunity for somebody there. Maybe that's where Matt will play. Not sure. He's, yeah. he's too good a player and yet not good enough. That's why it was always a strange signing and very expensive. You know, where do you find a place for £55 million pound signing that we didn't need? Yeah, I feel like... Also, Garnacho will start there in the final. I still feel like with yeah, with Rashford, course, yeah. such a dominant player on the left, that I feel like the starting with everyone fit would be Garnacho right, Oiland central, Rashford left. I still feel like that's um, Tenog's preference while while he settles. But yeah, it feels like United almost got pulled into like a parallel universe. You know. Like, like the Mount transfer feels like he should have gone to Villa. Do you know what I mean? In, in that kind of jiggity pokery nonsense that was, went on between Villa and Chelsea and uh, Forest and it was Newcastle and Everton. It, yeah, it yeah. feels like he should. Oh, Newcastle and Forest, by the way. I know it's nothing. They haven't done anything wrong. Sorry. So I just like. They haven't done anything, you know, against the Premier League's own laws, which the clubs set themselves. But yeah. come on, there are people at Juventus who went to prison for doing this. Yeah. You know, it's like they clearly, I forget the guy. I mean, he was so inconsequential, the guy that went from Newcastle to Forest for yeah. 35 million pounds or whatever it is. Uh, like, and then turns out it was way, way more than anyone thought it was. And then another player went the other way. And then. You know, obviously Newcastle legit sold one of their eighteen year olds to Brighton for thirty odd million and the guy had been at uh saying old for a year on loan. Yeah. Um but yeah, the Premier League should close this rule. And it's not it's the clubs that have to close this rule. Yeah. And you just wonder, are there fourteen votes to say, Come on, lads, you're fucking around here. This is against the spirit, if not against the laws. We can tell you five clubs who who wouldn't vote for that. Um and they're all make, yeah, making well, here. But the point is, uh, Mount feels like he was one of those transfers that just he, he went to the wrong club. Like we were, oh we'll pay the sixty four. Um so yeah, he just he just seemed odd because he wasn't better than what we had and there wasn't a place now, is there a place for a talented midfielder in the United squad? Would we need one? Um does he theoretically fill the Ericsson void when Ericsson goes? Theoretically, does, yeah, sure. He's not yeah, he's yeah. not as crafty as him, but he's a different kind of player. But he, he's that kind of player. He's in that ballpark. So, but where would Ericsson play now? He's not going to get in anywhere near United's starting eleven. And United don't no. don't change the system enough that you think that while well, he's an obvious place for him in say, you know, like we would change the system and bring Park in in European games. Yeah, there's no change of system. They say. That's Mount's system, so that's what we need him yeah, for. Yeah. There's nothing even there. If we find that, 
I do wonder about that, though, because Zerxe is such a different profile to Hoyland that it will look very different yeah. if he's playing. I, I do wonder whether there's an option to play two of them, but it would mean a, going to a, either a box midfield or a three at the back, which I don't really say. Definitely not the three at the back. Uh, I don't see maybe Diamond in midfield, yeah. sure. Um, uh, uh, Ten Hag has tried that. He might do it again. Man, I mean, if Kobe Manu doesn't start the season, he could start at eight, but Ten Hag has been sort of reluctant to do that. Yeah. So it kind of looks like he's reserved 10, but Bruno plays every game, every minute of every game that he's available for, even like Carlin Cup games, which is totally pointless. Ericsson, I don't mind him being at the club as a special teams player. Obviously, he's got a very high PSR cost, not not the transfer, but the wages. Um, so it you know, would be fairly attractive for him to go. But if Ten Hag likes the fact that he can put in, as we saw last night, a fantastic ball at a set piece, yeah. then that's you know that has its use, doesn't it? Uh, and he can come on to control a game yeah. if United want to manage a game at the end, you know, like, as the clock's running down. Uh, he's definitely not going to play too many 90s. Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought. Or if any. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, inter interesting times. Uh, before we go, what do you know about Real Betis? They used to have the Nielsen, the Brazilian player. They brought the, they used they to. Brought the world record for him. I remember that. They did. Um, that was about 25 years ago, mind you. Yeah. No, well, that's my area of expertise. Life in 25 years ago. Um, and Wacky, Wacky used to I play for, them Wacky. for about. Yeah. Does he, he not? Also played for about. Oh, well, he played for them about 25 years and he, he was still, still playing 25 years later. Still does, I feel yeah. like he retired because I feel like I saw clips of him, like, you know, bawling on the pitch because he finally retired age 48. So, Maybe. Um, he'll probably line up um, on. And right back against Mason, uh, not Mason Mount, um, Rashford. He'll and mark him out of the game. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe right. he'll probably like be like man of the match or something like that. Um, that's about all I know um, of them. I don't know much about the current team or where they where they finished last season. Um, but we played them. Obviously, we played we played them a couple of times. We played them in. Uh, yeah. We oh the the World Cup this the. the when before we played Qatar, when we had those, we had, but before the World Cup in Qatar, and United yeah. had like two friendlies, and they played one in Spain against Betis. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah. That's yeah. we don't have a, a don't have a strong history with them apart from we played the Europa game, didn't we, a couple of years ago against them. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, they uh, they finished tenth, okay, seventh in La Liga last season. Uh, I'm just looking down, like this is the uh, extent of my deep analysis and research, uh, looking at their squad on Wikipedia. Uh, so William Carvalho, who's linked with United for about 97 years. Yeah, uh, Schneider. Uh, Isco, who everyone thought was you know, going to be brilliant, turned out he wasn't. Uh, trying to look. Uh, William Jose, he's got he's forward to uh, Brazilian. He's got quite a few goals. And Nabil Fekir, who uh, almost went to Liverpool one time before. Yeah. Uh, they realised his knee was about to fall off, uh, so didn't. Hector Bellerin, uh, better known for his fashion than his football, yeah. I think. Claudio Bravo, who uh, Pep dumped um, uh, Joe Hart for. Um, Claudio Bravo, who could pass a ball but wasn't any good at keeping. So he was dumped within 10 months. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 There you go. There you, yeah. That's some hardcore analysis for. They've got a, they've got a pretty stripy green kit. No, all good. So, will we see United's third kit come out by the time uh, we go to Betty? So, that's normally the last one to be launched, isn't it? Yeah, probably so August. Kit, yeah. So, that's how I'd probably back in red. Yeah. Unless, unless someone back else leaves it. Uh, but they wouldn't play in what yeah. they, well, they wouldn't play in white. We've seen it. We've seen it. It's the kind of yeah. harking back to that stripy one from the 90s. It's quite nice, um, actually. It's quite nice. Um, it's got, well, I've got, I've got one on order. So, it should be turning up. And I've got the original as well. So, there you go. I'll uh, I'll I'll check them out, but those those originals. It's not. It's kind of the material in the kits these days feel all right. Those ones from the nineties, they feel like even in the coldest winter day that you're about to melt. Yeah. 
Like, and you definitely couldn't go near an open fire without literally melting. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You, would, um, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. you were combustible. Uh, <laughs> For sure. With those shirts on, yeah. Yeah. Well, I reckon in that bet is friendly, uh, apart from our really crap analysis there, I reckon probably 60 minutes for the main players from the 45, right? Yeah, but they've all had 45, 45, 45 in these opening games. Maybe 60 before we get to maybe a full 90 against Liverpool for some of them. Yeah, um, the weather will be a little bit warmer down, a little bit warmer. Um, ah, same, same, yeah. Uh, yeah, you would think probably a few more minutes. For for some of them, there's no one returning in the meantime. Is this so it's going to be the same players? Um, so. Yeah. There's... Well, Bruno and Dallo are due back earlier, I guess. Yeah. So if they're not in training yet, they'll be soon. So. Yeah. So yeah, I would imagine maybe a few more minutes in the second half. Um, but yeah, um, is what it is. O- yeah. Hopefully, no one. San Diego, known for its beaches, its uh, naval academy and uh, military military base. There's the gas lamp, which is the smallest downtown anywhere. There's like three blocks of restaurants, overpriced restaurants. And uh, then there's the old town, which is a bit more fun if you're Mexican. And if you really want some fun, you take a car and you go over the border to Tijuana, <laughs> which is, uh, I have to say, quite an experience for any listeners who've been or not been and want to... Yeah partake in the joys of um, the local painted ladies and uh, the local painted donkeys. So. If the um, game's no good, you can skip out on the hour mark and get an head start. Uh, yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. Very good. All right. Uh, I don't think we've got much else to say. Nothing to talk about on the women's side yet. They're, they're going to start. Uh, months later or so because uh, many players are at the Olympic Games and it's just short season anyway. There's not been a lot of movement over the last week since we last talked about it. Um, but yeah, hopefully some more transfers, maybe some more transfer news before we catch you again and, and we'll certainly be after back after that Betis game at some point. 